Hey everyone, Sweet Johnny Cage here, back with another guide for Elden Ring. This time I'm going to show you how to take down the Valiant Gargoyles in the Shifra Aqueduct in Nokrin. So this fight starts off with one gargoyle, and then when you get it to around 50% HP, a second one with a twin blade shows up, of course. So for the first gargoyle, things go pretty smoothly. There is a big beam ability that you want to watch out for. If you are not close to the boss by any means, you want to roll to the left because that beam starts to curve to your right at some point and you can end up rolling into it even though you seem to just be on the bleeding edge of the damage, you can still take a hit. The boss will occasionally change weapons, so it'll switch between a sword and then a big two-handed axe. The twin blade boss can switch between a twin blade and a one-handed axe, so you gotta watch out for that as well. I really recommend if you have a big weapon build, like a big two-handed greatsword or something, switch to a different, quicker weapon. The reason for this is because when you have to fight two gargoyles, you will not have as much time to recover from your hits without taking a bunch of damage. So switching to a quicker weapon is really going to help you out. Once phase two begins when the second gargoyle comes in, the bosses will begin emitting poison a whole lot. It can happen in phase one, albeit kind of rare, but once there's two, one of them always seems to be breathing poison throughout the fight. So you see there, I rolled to the right of that beam and I wound up taking damage because it begins to curve. So always either roll to the left or just try to avoid it by doing anything but rolling to the right. Rolling to the right is almost certainly gonna make you take damage if you're not really close to the boss. So what I'm trying to do now is I'm just trying to keep both gargoyles in front of me, or at the very least, keep an ear out for the second gargoyle. This way I know what's coming. What we wanna do is keep our focus on the first one because we want to make this a 1v1 as quickly as possible. It is very important during this phase especially that you do not put your back up against any walls the poison stretches really far, and it deals a lot of damage very quickly. So you wanna make sure you have ample space to get out of that poison. And if you're up against the wall, you're gonna end up taking damage. I mean, look, the poison is building here, and I was nowhere near the boss. The, the plume is so big, it's honestly obnoxious. But from this point on, the boss is gonna start attacking us again, so we should be able to get some extra damage in, when the boss is changing weapons, feel free to just lay into it. You can dodge the follow-up attack after it switches pretty easily by just rolling into the boss, and it shouldn't be too hard of a, a challenge there. But once it's back to a one-on-one, -on -one, this becomes a lot easier. The problem is, though, this is still technically phase two, so the gargoyle is going to be still breathing a lot of poison. So you're going to spend a lot of time in this phase just running away from poison and just waiting for the boss to come to you. The Twin Blade uh, boss very rarely is gonna do any sort of attack that like will cause you to worry about the other end of its Twin Blade. If it's not just spinning the weapon, you can really just consider this a one-handed attack weapon. It's not doing anything special. It's not like it has a big combo where it hits you with the front, then hits you with the back, then the front again. It's either the front or it's spinning it entirely. So really not too much to worry about with the Twin Blade. The one-handed axe, however, is very quick, so you want to be careful. The boss can delay its attacks by dragging it or just holding its arm up for an extended period of time, so you really just want to pay attention to the boss's hands and then attack when the hands start moving towards you. When the boss roars, it is going to slam down the axe, and then it's going to follow up by pressing it into the ground again and doing a really big earthquake. So when it roars, you want to do your best to stay behind the boss, and then you won't have to worry about it at all. All right, so what I recommend doing here is not necessarily baiting out attacks. You kind of can't do that against this boss. But when it's doing its big aerial attacks, just sort of stand still and wait for it to slam down, and then just roll through the slam, and you'll get a lot of follow-up damage. When the boss is doing its big whirlwind, you can attempt to get inside of it and keep rolling through the damage. That is entirely possible, but it is building up a big wind gust that you have to watch out for. You can roll through it, I've done it, 
but it is quite difficult, so you're better off just waiting for a better opportunity. So you saw there, the boss switched its weapon, did a roar, and then slammed it down, and you had an earthquake to deal with. So when it has this axe out, or really any time, you want to do your best to stay behind the boss. So it's going to slam, big earthquake, unfortunately I got hooked up in that, because I wasn't far enough behind the boss, but you saw the previous time, it is avoidable. So we're going to get another couple hits on the boss. It'll go down. I'm doing my best not to chase it because I've gotten greedy against this boss plenty of times and paid the price. But it probably has 2 HP at this point. 216. There you go. All right, and that's it. Those are the Gargoyles. And you'll get the Gargoyles Greatsword and the Gargoyles Twin Blade for your troubles. And that's it. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave a comment. I'll do my best to help you out. If you're looking for more guides for Elden Ring, please subscribe to the channel so you get alerted when new guides go live. If you're interested in supporting the channel monetarily, please consider becoming a channel member by clicking the blue join button below this video. Don't forget to follow me on Twitter and join my Discord. The links for those are in the description below. As always, I'll speak Johnny Cage. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.